Hello everyone, and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Today is August 26th, 2022. 160 years ago on August 26th, 1862, one of my ancestors, William Tracy, enlisted in the Union Army. Now, today we're going to be talking about William Tracy's its first video and we're getting into a three part um family history. So William Tracy was born on July sixth, eighteen thirty seven in Ireland. His parents were Martin Tracy and Elizabeth McDool Tracy. He was one of nine children and had eight siblings meaning four brothers and four sisters. And eventually, the Tracys immigrated to the U.S. and moved to Barker County or Barker, New York. And it is that on August 26th, 1862, William Tracy enlisted in Company B of the hundred and of the one hundred and sixty fourth New York Volunteer Infantry Regiment. The hundred and sixty fourth New York was commanded by Colonel James Power McMahon and was in a brigade known as the Irish Legion. Not the Irish Brigade, that was led by um, Tom, Brigadier General Thomas Francis Marr. This is the Irish Legion under the command of Brigadier General Michael Corcoran. And the regiment was one of five and was mustered into service on November 19th, 1862. And the same day, he would be promoted to corporal. Now, he would see, and a few months later, he would see action, his first action, as well as the regiment's first engagement at the Battle of Deserted House or Kelly's Store. On January 30th, 1863, near Suffolk, Virginia. And he would also participate in the Siege of Suffolk. But, I made a mistake. It's actually, um, the commander of the 164th was, uh, there's three brothers, the McMahon brothers. There was Eugene. There was Eugene. There was James Power McMahon. And first commander actually was. John Eugene McMahon, John Eugene McMahon, sorry. And he would die in Buffalo, New York in 1863. And in that same year, 1863, they didn't really ha see a lot of action in mid-central 1863, but tragedy struck on December 23rd, 1863, two days before Christmas. The, co the brigade commander, Michael Corcoran, was riding through the town of Fairfax Courthouse on his horse when it was, when he was thrown and he fell and cracked his skull. 
He was taken to the W.P. Gunnell house and was declared dead. There is a currently at the intersection on at Main Street. There's a marker to him and where he fell. He fell on Ox Road, not Main Street. That Main Street is where the W.P. Gunnell House is. Now, the Irish Legion, after the brigade commander, Michael Corcoran, was killed, was transferred to the Army of the Potomac, which was fighting east in what is now known as the Overland Campaign of 1864. Now, William Tracy would witness two battles of the Overland Campaign, the battles of Spotsylvania Courthouse and Cold Harbor. It is at Cold Harbor that on June 3rd, Eight eighteen sixty four Grant would launch a massive assault against Confederate lines. Now when the brigade was transferred, it was label it was then known as the fourth brigade and the second division of the second corps. The fourth brigade, the Irish Legion, was commanded by Brigadier General Robert O. Tyler in the second division commanded by Major General John Gibbon. He commanded the second division in the sec and Lieutenant General Winfield Scott Hancock's Second Corps. So on June third they will launch a massive assault against entrenched Confederates, and it is some of the bloodiest fighting of the entire war. And in that small period, the 164th would have been on the left flank of the Irish Legion. So they had two other New York regiments and they would have had and they would have had them to the sides. So they were on the extreme left. There's one, two, three, four, five and they pretty much made an assault and they were the middle of Gibbon's line. So Tyler's brigade was the middle and they were on the left flank. As they as they made the assault, a stray bullet would hit General McMahon in the chest. And we don't know exactly how, but William Tracy, who pretty much, there's 10 companies in a regiment. He was in Company B, and there's pretty much Company A, Company B, C, D in reserve, and then just a formation. Well, the captain would be here, and the corporal, and since he was a corporal, he would be at, think of like a rectangle, he would be one of the corners. So he was up front in the top left corner. And the captain would have been right next to him, and the colonel would have been at the center of the line. So he would have been a few feet away from McMahon when he was shot, and as well as himself. Now, there was a bunch of confusion, and I actually did a bunch of research on this and went down to Cold Harbor itself. 
he there was three options for where he was buried. He was either buried in the National Cemetery across from the Garthright House, which the Garthright House would have been the right flank of the Irish Legion. And the le- so at the end of the line would have been the 164th. That is not on... The 164th, where they fought, was not on preserved land as of now. It's... There was three possibilities. He was either buried in the National Cemetery, like I said, where Colonel McMahon is buried, or he is either buried in a mass grave, as an, even though when they sent people out there to get McMahon's body, when there was a truce, they recognize Tracy, it's either he's in the cemetery as an unknown burial, even, even though he was recognized, in a mass grave, even though he was recognized, or, as we found out, he is buried up in Barker, New York, at Quaker Cemetery, where he and the rest of his family, besides a few others, are buried, and they are pretty much buried in Quaker Cemetery, Barker, New York. The end, and also, please like and subscribe. This is part one of my personal, uh, I don't know how many parts, uh, just three main parts. I might add some in the future. Please like and subscribe thank you for watching and subscribe and comment what topic you want me to do next all right oh